Welcome everyone to this more random update. Another video I didn't plan to meet but it was scrolling by so I thought I wanted to speak about this already so use the time, the chance here as long as it's super fresh and just breaking news. Not all is totally super well in AMD land and as you know I like to keep vendors accountable for what they are doing and not only um, influence promote here whatever and yeah only if it's like good and if there's a problem we also talk about this <clears throat> and we should talk about this random AMD problem what is this problem so you might have read on one of your favorites or something like that a thousand boot problems with new Linux distributions might be due to render uh, read render issue read render read run is this read Yeah, so that is the correct spelling. Read run is a CPU instruction of modern CPUs that can return random data here. Read random, load, <coughs> load the re destination register with hardware generated random value. So historically, open source developers were usually uh, quite suspicious with NSA kind of secret uh, service. Uh, and in such implementations like flipping this randomness off in your encryption stream and then you have easy to crack encrypted connections and stuff. So um, what is the issue? The issue turned out here and I would never have caught this because I don't run systemd. So the issue apparently is systemd, not like a kernel, not like whatever. But um, if you take a look at this, here's even like um, some people jump here to the conclusion maybe I myself here um, okay so some people jumped here to the conclusion also a little bit quickly because they write here the problem seems to be systemd directly using the render instruction and um, without reading the AMD programmers manual as far as I can see they are not doing this here so this is actually not true as much as I don't like systemd for so many other reasons because he writes there if you look in the specification, this is by the way how this looks, if you were wondering how does it look, not only the up and done where S3, Verge, Voodoo and Rendition Verity specs, you also find at least some specs here of this kind of stuff. And this render instructions, they write here, hardware modifies the carry flag, CF is carry flag, um, which is usually set by other instructions for an uh, overflow like even addition uh, you add two numbers two 8-bit numbers this overflow that is a carry uh, carry flag and indicate whether the value returned in the destination register is valid if carry flag is one the value is valid if carry flag is zero the value is invalid software must test the state of the carry flag prior to using the value by the way this is cf flag it's um yeah cf is already carry flag flag so usually like pdf file P portable document file file but whatever, prior to using the value returned in the destination register to determine if the value is valid. Uh, we read this, I think. Software must execute the instruction again. Software should implement a retry limit to ensure forward progress of code. So the only thing, as far as I've seen, um, we need to blame systemd for not having implemented a correct retry limit ensuring forward progress of code. This is the thing they actually have failed. So this user's comment here is partially correct um, and if you look in the code, the code is, however the code is not very readable so here's a change set and uh, I hope you enjoy our YouTube channel for really taking a look how this stuff is done so I have to say this code is not the most readable I also didn't read it correctly so they actually set the carry flag here set C is set this variable according to the carry flag a little bit not as often used x86 instruction, uh, maybe even a little bit more old, old fashioned, uh, maybe so to say. So I have to say this is not the most readable code. I would have at least named this like carry flag or something, having this named V because um, scrolling over this, I thought this was a random value, but it isn't. So in my opinion, code, some live code reviewer, in my opinion, not the most amazingly named variables. And um, because red, I would personally rather use red for like the return success state and v for the value. So this is a little bit yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, at least maybe red or even directly name it carry that 
carry flag or something C, uh, C flag that you know what they do. So they implemented here some workaround like checking if it's uh, long max like minus one or all um, all bits set. This is of course a super crude workaround that you should actually n never do. So I have to blame them for not having a loop. So they return here. Um, all right. So actually they, I think, because, so this is actually, I have to agree with this. So both sides were like half right. It is an, as far as I can see from here, it is an CPU bug or microcode bug or BIOS bug. And um, however, systemd should have had some kind of loop because um, actually, well, not a loop. I actually, I'm not really sure why it's hanging because I think the, the bug is in, uh, well, actually maybe, okay, maybe we shouldn't blame systemd too much. It's actually not that much of a bug because actually the CPU sets the carry flag. So actually it looks like the value is set. Um, the more of the bug is that systemd does not forward execute and hang somewhere if the random numbers are not random. So yeah, systemd is not really so as much to blame. However, we should probably blame them. In my opinion, this is not good style to do this in your program anyway, because you should have used the kernel API and open dev u random or dev random because the Linux kernel already has some abstractions. This is probably why systemd is the only thing that is failing because the Linux kernel already has measures to verify entropy and do not use hardware number generator stuff that is not having enough entropy. So long story short, this is a situation, this is a bug. And there is some news, which is why I started the live stream. The news is there is supposedly a BIOS update the next days because I was actually just about to flash the BIOS here for supposedly soon AMD 3000. And then just when I like wanted to reboot, I opened this new site to say, wait a second, what BIOS update? So now I will BIOS update next week or something. So they're right here to my surprise. And I really have to call out AMD now even more. AMD, if you're listening, I hope you're listening and don't forget to share, like and subscribe because it uh, would be amazing if the, our channel becomes more popular to give more influence to do things right. I really wonder why this was not caught in verification and development. In my opinion, this is extremely um, un thinkable um, and unreasonable to r release a CPU with such a design flaw or bug or something as amazing. And there you see how complex our C x86 CPU is nowadays. Not only AMD, so you have seen Intel. So the only thing Intel is doing is also doubling buffers and caches. Stupid. So we have billions of logic gates there and they still can't deliver random numbers, which is of course crazy. And if you see all the risk five people also run Clifford Wolf with formal verification. I really wonder why is this not more verified um, and uh, how can such bugs appear in the wild? Because this is now even more crazy that there is a game, um, Destiny 2, that even on Windows, so this is not only a Linux bug, but is also showing up on Windows, which in my opinion is even more crazy because you would think in maybe it's some BIOS boot API coincidence something um, and this bug is already older so it was already occurring on older AMD silicon we will see this in a second but only after like a suspend resume so previous AMD GPUs apparently did work until the first suspend resume or something and this bug is also totally old that we see in a second so a double shout out to AMD this is hilarious and unresponsible how they handled this bug for already maybe four years, which is crazy. And um, there you see how much I also call out NVIDIA that we need specifications and I want specifications like how do specifications look? They look like this. You have seen also S3 Verge, 3DFX Voodoo, um, also other stuff like ET4000, W32 and all kind of other amazing stuff here on this channel. This is how specifications look and I want this from NVIDIA. I refuse and I will boycott NVIDIA as long as well. We have a little bit of NVIDIA also in the P3 that I still need to finish some kernel update and RSX stuff. So 
Why are specifications so important to write not only open source drivers but also understand what is happening? You see, if you would not have a specification, not only could you not use this functionality, you have also have it very hard with reverse engineering to even use it and write drivers and so on. And um, also lesson learned, do not use this stuff in raw, always use operating system interfaces like the kernel ones that already do some verification, especially on this fragile stuff like hardware random generators. So as this bug occurs on Windows, this game apparently does not even start or something. It doesn't work. Doesn't I, I'm not in Windows gaming, so whatever. So um, it is also a little bit sad that as much as AMD is trying to support Linux with GPU drivers and everything, it is a little bit said that it takes a Windows game to maybe, I don't know, if now the, if AMD reacts now that systems are not booting at all now with systemd or this Windows game, I don't know, um, leave me in the comments below what you think, is it a Windows game or systemd not booting, you see already systemd preventing your Linux from booting, taking over entirely. So they write exactly the same, of course, that we already have seen from Pharonix, minus one here or all bit set, hex ff ff minus one, whatever. And so they write here BIOS update soon. And um, this bug is already older. So let's check is this um, seen on issue around issue. This fixes, yeah, this issue. Let's see, can't suspend. Yeah, so you see, um, I think I have seen a kernel bug. So this is from February 23rd. And this is what CPU AMD? Yes, this is an AMD A8. Here, APU with AMD Radeon graphics. So this is quite some generations before, and I think I've seen somewhere uh, was this here or should have actually opened this before the live stream. Any from that? Yeah, here's 2014. Maybe it was this link. Yeah, this is probably the kernel box that I was aware already. So you see. AMD family 22 CPUs, this bug already 2014, and yeah, AMD, this is really not okay that you have an open bug, like since 2014, that your random random number generator, like it's like a little bit important in this day and age for all those crypto stuff, you name it. And um, yeah, you don't want to in initialize all your uh, TLS, H uh, HTTPS connections with an initialization vector and stuff of fixed minus one that really isn't that cool. And yeah, this is what I wanted to uh, point you out. And there you see the whole CPU can be as amazing and high performance as whatever if you have such small bugs. Not only does this ruin your reputation, it also may prevent booting and certainly leaves a bad taste in regards of how you verify your CPUs. Well, I will anyway get one because the performance is amazing, but this bug really is not cool. Also, uh, another, so two more po uh, shout outs here for, I hope, your education. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe and spread the word here for maximum influence and awareness. The one thing that is really not cool is that AMD apparently is not telling what the fix is. Uh, and they also point this out in this German article uh, somewhere, I think, um, as far as I... Yeah, so AMD, maybe this is a quote here, they write here from the statement from AMD in original. AMD has identified the root cause and implemented a BIOS fix for an issue impacting the ability to run certain Linux distributions and Destiny 2. Also, yeah, in 2019, you have an update of an operating system and some game in the same sentence, a little bit crazy. Ryzen's resource processors. We've also, does this probably, what is with the BIOS update for the previous generation of products that have this since 2014, so um, thanks for that. We have distributed and updated BIOS to our motherboard partners and we expect, it, uh, expect consumers to have access to the new BIOS over the coming years. This is, however, the same situation. First of all, as I said, previous generation CPUs, hello, what's with them? Second of all, we have seen with Intel's management engine and other vulnerabilities that you also didn't get a vendor update for all of those affected SKUs, logic boards and stuff. And it would really be a better development in the future if we would get such kind of BIOS firmware module updates directly from the vendor and could flash this in regardless of whether 
an old motherboard from two years ago or even maybe in this case four years ago will get an update from the BIOS vendor because chances are they don't care and you will never get an update. So in my opinion, we should work to a future where the BIOS update is also independent of the motherboard, in my opinion, to really be able to always flash important security and bug fixes like this. And second of all, the last shout out, this is maybe not the only implementation defined behavior thing because just scrolling by, also from Pharonix, you see great fans here. And um, Dragonfly BSD gets a fix to be able to boot AMD Zen 2 processors. So apparently Matthew Dillon from Dragonfly BSD fame has been mesmerized by the AMD Threadripper performance. This link probably a shameless page view increased self link here. Not a huge fan of those, but um, I've seen other mailing list stuff from Matthew that he always was quite liking the method of parallel thread uh, performance there from AMD. However, to my surprise, Dragonfly, you would normally think this, and there you see backward compat compatibility, right? It's always like x86 is backward compatibility to uh, the latest, uh, to the very first Intel 80, 88, 8086 from 1979 or something. And this is not so much the case anymore. And although the CPUs implement all of those crazy real mode instructions that nobody really is using anymore, um, you would think that with all this compatibility of three decades of, of old-fashioned crap there, you would just be able to boot an OS. And then even though it's a modern OS that has the support for all the latest and greatest details of chipsets and CPUs, you would think, hey, even the OS from last month would just boot. But no, um, let's see, is this, yeah, this is uh, directly so. Uh, Dragonfly BSD apparently also didn't boot and not because of this random crap minus one fixed orbit set crap issue but apparently here's is some load fs here's this um, additional segment register so you've maybe seen in my low level protected mode dos stuff that there are some annoying segment registers and you have es so code segment data segment then fsg is for extra segments that you can use for all this kind of jazz and stuff and apparently, according to Matthew Dillon, it's the first time I read this, I've not, maybe another day we do our own protected mode DOS fan, maybe even bare metal, I wonder, maybe another day we boot DOS on the horizon just for the fun of it. But uh, you know, vintage stuff, right, with the voodoo or some fun stuff like this. And we have a PCIe to PCI bridge just to plug in some voodoo or rendition variety. Maybe give it a thumbs up and leave in the comments below if you want me to run Quake 1 on horizon just for the heck of it. But when Matthew says this, it is so, then I have all reasons to believe that it is so. He, he writes, apparently the Zen 2 handles FS in a wired way when the selector isn't loaded, causing the first write um, MSR, like some machine-specific register, um, FS, RFS base to quietly fail, like uh, AMD, what is going on with your development and verification? And there you see my recurring shout out. And if some people think I'm crazy for saying this x86 instructions and architecture becomes too complex to even maintain bug free. You've seen this, all the Intel bugs and now a couple of handful AMD bugs also. We had some Phenom 2 before I was even on YouTube and doing my YouTube videos. We had the Phenom, Phenom 2, 1 or 2, something like that bug. There was also something with also even a bug that Matthew Dillon found. Uh, some some crazy stuff with super complex jump and segment loading nonsense ha happening and um, bugs to be worked around also some TLB flush something that you see also many bugs I can't even really remember five six seven maybe it was even nearly dec a decade ago kind of uh, a wonder that I still remember uh, all those stupid bugs so even in the fan IMD phenom days there were some glitches and maybe they even work around this on microcode and the performance became like two, three, four percent slower. And yeah, now again, let's open this here. So what is the fix? Let's open this here. Um, no, this is not the right one. Can't suspend where is our, this is not what I, ah, yes, Dragonfly. So let's see, so uh, issue load. First time I see this in the AP bootstrap, it, appears and two handles, yeah, we for good measure also load, load. Uh, so yeah, they load here, 
Um, you did selector hmm, MP mesh dependency. So not really sure what he's workarounding there. Um, but as he said, this load fails. Yeah, a little bit obscure. Also wonder why does this not occur booting Windows or Linux? But there you see uh, just the order having some segment selectors loaded, not not loaded, whatever. Um, the translation look aside buff was also there was also one bug that only the special kind of stack layout of dragonflight triggered on the amd phantoms or something of that sort back in the day and there you see why i am looking forward to risk 5 the problem is of course getting really high performance risk 5 in a couple of years because truth told with all even with all the stupid bugs and workarounds x86 is still the highest performance either out there unfortunately but this is likely not the instructions and architecture just the implementation the massive parallel and huge billions of logic gates buffers caches you name it doubled each and every other generation um, but with this bug this is really scary that cpus have this kind of bugs not only on the intel but also the amd side and um, yeah, we have some comments in the audience. That's that for today, all this shout out and summary. For me, it is frightening that CPUs have such bugs and then I rather, yeah. Well, Clifford Wolf with his PicoRisk 35 is doing formal verification, but of course this is uh, not pipeline, not speculative, um, certainly not the most easy to formally verify a super scalar and um, mighty core and hyper threaded and stuff cpu with billions of logic gates um, but yeah it is scary i will get it nonetheless um, not only because this is the highest performance i amd fixes something but hey amd really seriously tell us what is the fix for this is this only some initialization glue in the bios um, but i will continue to call out vendors for not disclosing what their fix is. Um, it is also said that maybe we should, um, I actually saved the BIOS, so maybe we are able to determine the fix by disassembling the BIOS, which is also crazy that we ourselves need to disassemble the BIOS just to find out what AMD really work around it there. Or maybe it's in the microcode, disassembling the microcode is of course even harder. There were some Chaos Communication Congress people who did some um, kind of sort of reverse engineering of I think maybe it was AMD microcode but this is of course even more crazy that we need to resort to disassembling and rever reverse engineering microcode to find the fixes for this so huge criticism for release the fixes and release the technical implementation details and this is why people never trusted hardware random number generators and uh, why you maybe should not trust them and you should have like the Linux kernel some entropy um, sanitization code around this and not trust anything blindly and continue to call it. Um, yeah as usual leave me in the comments below what you think about this what you want is do you want is just for the fun of it try to boot DOS on this kind of stuff and one quake or doom comments in the audience hello everyone Thanks for your reviews. That is, uh, thanks for liking this. Much welcome. Uh, crazy news here. Yeah, unfortunately, as usual, because switching to new hardware, it wait two years. Yes, yeah, is also, uh, by the way, fun fact. I have not. Uh, I, the other day, I made the video. I'm running Linux 5.2, but even with Linux, you see all the kind of bug fixes. I always, yeah. So we have a new micro patch level update thing here for quite some. I opened this already. Uh, the next usual dot 17 so here yeah, I even with the Linux kernel I always wait usually 4.1 and um, that's not there yet so this is why if you wonder why in T2 I will actually could do this am I locked okay maybe I don't have a root shell I don't want to type the password so this is why in T2 our open source cross compiling stuff I will rather update I updated to dot 16 and will now update to 0.17 and Although I pre-tested 5.2, I will only commit 5.2 to T2 Linux when the first dot one patch set is out because even there I, although it works for me, but yeah, even even there, the first dot 
one point update is always better just in case whatever and um, yeah crypto software use your own and cpu bug aren't really nothing new hold bug um, f00f a uh, fun fact the very first pentium that i i always said um, so this is not a new amd thing because um, when i got my first pentium after six seven eight years on my father's 386 s625 that even only last year i still need to repair the board the board is battery acid damaged you have seen this board on youtube here still need to it does still doesn't boot um, something wrong with the memory address lane so something still need to figure that out another winter day fun fact that i always thought it's an intel sx25 but this was overclocked probably even factory from the no-name vendor uh, you can find the board details in this other video i never realized this i when i was like eight years old or ten years old i never bothered to look on the cpu so only uh, now last year uh, trying to repair this and, and tracing and battery asset i looked on the cpu and was like wait a second why is there dash 16 so yeah we have run our 386 sx 25 slash 16 overclocked and didn't even know that it's a thing or possible or whatsoever anyway only 20 five years later you find out and another thing so when i then i saved all my money eventually i brought my first own pc that was a intel pentium 120 that was just like they also existed 130 maybe this was a second most expensive SKU there for sure was 133 which was most expensive SKU or something and so i got 120 megahertz pentium why do i tell you this again the first one i got it was not running stable so i plugged this in it worked out of principle or assembled all the stuff there in my basement and it was working but it was randomly crashing so even like we I probably for sure played quake and maybe other things maybe windows and stuff was crashing randomly so every other 30 minutes something was crashing and i was of course super disappointed especially i saved multiple years birthdays newspaper delivery and this kind of stuff and then you spend all your money and then your pc is not running stable and then it turned out also huge shout out to this uh, heiser here back in the day when paper magazines were still a thing in by by pure chance and accident i found there was like some like second grade like b not like triple a quality but like like b quality kind of urban denver silicon out there and there were some serial numbers and i don't remember the details maybe i google it another day if you can still find it there on, on this high ct stuff so it turned out the cpu they had some serial number markers there and i had like some like not 100 percently verified quality something whatever bullshit this was and then i i was of course happy that because i, I didn't know why is this randomly crashing i never had this with our 386 s625 although it was overclocked for a decade so i was very thankful for this magazine article this certainly this were five deutschmarks well spent because with this magazine article i went back to the um vorbis or whatever that was back in the day i think uh, they are bankrupt in the meantime so I, I went to this like radio shark kind of store said hey hello this cpu is running instable and hey look on the ct article this serial number is like not not a quality something this is some up and done where like i don't know b quality kind of up and done where not verified crapware um why do we even try to sell this shit to me and only because so you would normally not be able to return at least not back in the day return your cpu they would always tell you yeah you electrocuted it with some static charge of walking on your carpet or some bullshit something and probably only because of this article i was able to return the cpu and then i got a cpu that was on the serial number not in this b quality kind of not really functional bullshit kind of stuff and that cpu was running stable and i probably maybe still have this here if it's the same cpu i'm just only telling this so even back in the day in 1996 or 5 or whatever that was even then it was a thing that you got shit crap cpus for whatever bullshit that was so yeah totally happy that then and this this serial number kind of issue really cured the random segmentation faults from that day with the second cpu quake was running stable and windows was well at least not crashing that often but at least it fixed the random quake crashes and that was certainly well 
Windows was so unstable, I then moved on to Linux. But um, at least uh, in Linux it was stable then and it fixed the quake thing. So hope you learned something. Uh, watch out for this and you certainly want to load this BIOS update. And don't forget to share, like and subscribe because it would be amazing if we could gather more of a subscription base here for put more pressure on CPU vendors. There are some call out like random bullshit like this. Way too long not fixed. Random instruction here. And yeah. Hope you learned something. Hope to see you soon for the next videos and live streams to come.